earth system is regulated by faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. The Bible says by faith we understand. Not by understanding we have faith. You have to understand by faith. Hallelujah. I want all of us to live very long. No, I, have, I, have, I, have, I have been a study, I have been uh, an archaeologist in the body of Christ. What I have been doing many years is to excavate the mysteries that lies in me. When I say a great man, I'm not interested in greatness. Your greatness is cheap. I get what I'm saying. I'm interested in the mysteries, what he knows that make him great. When I see a man fall, I'm not interested in his body. I'm interested in what he did that make him to fall. You have to say now. I'm not telling what the devil is doing. I'm telling you how does he do it? The Bible says we should not be ignorant of the devices. If you understand the devices, if you understand the process of anything, you can stop it. Programmers know how to stop network from entering your phone from here. They will change the process. And that's what the devil used to do many more times. Sadhu Silva has left India. And he came to Nigeria. And he said that the Lord told him that if you come to Nigeria to warn the ministers that are rising. Because Nigeria is pivotal in the agenda of God, even beyond Africa. Nigeria is the only nation that God has saved as the Israel to recover the nation. I know. And that's why everything has failed in Nigeria except Christianity. Your system of government will fail. Everything will fail. And when God has done that, it will let us understand that the only surviving principle upon which we will live is upon only them that know they are, the Lord, they are God, that can only be strong and do exploit. We are living in a nation upon which it doesn't favor its own. So you must understand that you are not of the system of this earth. But these are the time upon which we are going to prosper even in the land. So Nigeria is actually the nation that will send messenger to the entire spam of the earth. Of the world and proclaim the true texture the genuity of Christianity because every other nation somehow have gone astray like sheep without shepherd the devil has programmed them and he has destroyed them and Sadhu Silvaraj the man that survived in India he was trained by Sadhu Sudasin and that man was in India and God told him to come to Nigeria and come and announce as a prophet, as a Nabi. I think he explained so much about Nabi, about the prophet. That it's only the prophets that have the ability to see a power of and project it, right? I have to understand that although we are rising as an infernum that God will use, but the devil is programming us within. So that before we start, we are already destroyed. And he said, one of the weapons that the devil is using is that it's going to be raising ministers that are going to be on fire but they are going to be immoral ministers that are going to be on fire but they are going to be plagued with sexual sins and all kinds of weaknesses and I say God is crying for a pure virgin of ministers to rise so Nigeria is in the prophecy but the devil is sowing seed in the foundation and ensuring that as we are growing tears are growing with us and we cannot amount to much Because their nation to hope for us. I said there's going to be an avalanche of young ministers, young men and women rising from Nigeria. They have never seen the like of them. They are going to come like the jewel army that will be sent to diverse nations. They may not die, but they will be irrelevant if the devil is able to conquer them. And he said, and we have to watch ourselves. And not be excited with what God is doing with us. But that we should be interested in how deep we can go with God and how our roots can be planted well. And we should be right and genuine to ourselves and God.
Maybe he was the one that told us that I was afflicted when I went astray. That he was afflicted when he went astray. That part of his backsliding permitted the devil to afflict him. So let me tell you. For you to be able to thrive very well and remain under the cover and the protection of God. Many more times. You must learn to be righteously strict to yourself. You know all those things that came with grace. I think Apostle dealt with that. That Jesus has forgiven you the sin you are yet to commit. I will teach you that one too. It's true. But let me tell you the truth. You have to hold repentance in your hand like this as you are taking those things. Know that you are wrong and keep repenting daily. If not, anytime you sway away in disobedience, you are prone to the devil to strike you. Mercy can cover you, but not too long. But where the grace of God cannot see you, the mercy of God cannot reach you. You are gone. One of the mystery of spiritual protection. A spiritual protection is nothing but the ability of God to preserve a man or to preserve a generation from decay and decadence. Spiritual protection is a system upon which God saves a generation from the onslaught of darkness that becomes the generation. It's a preservative plan. And one of the greatest ways that God does that is to put a banner around someone. Another time is to mark you with a seal. Now this is this is touch not. The Bible says the Holy Ghost is our seal. That we belong to God. We saw how that in Goshen, is it Goshen? Do you know Israel have to be marked, all of them. Their doorposts need to be marked because there is an angel that is going to come to sleep. And if you are not marked, you can never be protected. A lot of times what God does is that He put a defense system, He put a fortress around you. A fortress is different from a barrack. But many more times, a defense system has the ability to defend you, right? A fortress has the ability both to defend you and to attack your enemy. Do you have seen now? Many believers' problem is that they are only defensive, they are not offensive. You can't survive being only on the defense. Bible says God will give grace to them that will take the battle to the gate of their enemy. I didn't just remember one time he said, one day he, when he finished praying all the causes in their family and dealing with all the witches, one day he woke up and he was still praying it again. He said, ah, but we have conquered you. I said, no, I want them to awake. Let me kill them again. And I'm killing the ones that are yet to be born. Because there will only be wickedness. The Bible says they will own as liars in the hand of wicked men. There are unreasonable wicked people upon the face of Don't tell anybody they like you, let me tell you the truth. There are men that bound themselves with an oath that they will never eat or drink until they keep Paul. Do you realize that? But some people stoned Paul until he died and resurrected again. There are some that try to push Jesus by a cave and push him out. And he passed by them. Imagine if he doesn't know how to pass by them. It was a mystery. They would have pushed him. Let me tell you, you survive in this kingdom by mysteries. How much more you know that you have made impact of it? Prayer is one of it. But let me tell you, there are times. What if they cut your tongue like what's my name? Will you speak in tongue? Bala, 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 bala. If all what you know is tongue, that day you are over. I told you that you must understand many more times taking other weapons, like the weapon of sounds, the weapon of praise, the weapon of dancing, and making melody in your heart. 
I wonder what kind of dance that David danced. I wonder what kind of shout and dance that they walk around Jericho that make it to fall. I wonder how David used to go for war and put musicians. You want to go for war? You carry choir. And you put them at the front. No, no. No, no. No man with his senses will do that. But let me tell you. You remember the case of those four lepers? What a, an army could not be able to conquer, four lepers conquered it. Israel was, they were captured as captives by the Assyrian, right? The whole land was taken away. In fact, it was those times that they were eating their children. And they met the Nabi. I like the words he used today, sir. They met the prophet, Elisha, right? The king said, Elisha, you are a prophet. I don't know how God is preserving you, but rather, right? If you don't do something about this, we will cook you. Tomorrow morning I will eat you. When the prophet was put on that, sometimes I have to put pressure on that people. Sometimes I have to force certain people to bless me by force. Had that been the king, did not put pressure upon the prophet, the prophet would not make any decree, they would still remain in captivity. But we are too comfortable with the level you are. And like I said, by this time tomorrow, he began to say, The burden of weed that was set for this will change to this. What we are just trying to say is that by this time tomorrow, the, God, the Lord will turn away the captivity. And it will be as though they are dreaming. One man saw and said, even if God opened the windows of heaven, it's not possible for... It's just like for us to say that by this time tomorrow, Nigeria will become the world head superpower. How is that possible? That Nigeria will, be, will be, become the headquarter of the entire nation, not U.S., not Russia, not China. Somebody can say, even if God chooses to do it, it will not be possible. And the prophet said, you will see it, but you will not eat it. And I also tell you that the Bible said, believe in the Lord your God, and you will what? Be established. You believe in his prophet, you will prosper. By a prophet, the Lord delivered the people. By a prophet, he preserved them. God is handicapped with that prophet. I'm very serious. Bible says God in time past spoke to us by our father as a prophet. But now he has choose to. But even before, prophet and the Lord have to come and accredit Jesus. So Moses and Elijah have to appear and say we have approve of you. If not, God would have never. Well, you know, up to today, the Jewish people refuse to accept your Messiah. They still want their prophet because they were preserved by the prophet. The prophetic is preservation, my friends. A prophet can preserve you from a dying time. While I was still growing in God, I was not yet... Uh, and the prophet is not an office. It's an expression. You get what I'm saying now? That is the office of the prophet. But that is the prophetic dimension that grants you the ability. Yesterday I explained to you that a son is supposed to have diverse capacity. The highest revelation you can reach in God is a son. When you reach that revelation, you can become a priest, you can become a king, you can become a prince, you can become a priest, you can become a prophet. It is in your priesthood that you understand you cannot become an intercessor, a watcher, a gatekeeper. And the same women that are sold become daughters of mystery, daughters of covenant, daughters of incense. All those things are incorporated in it. It's part of your function. Then, before we travel, we'll go and meet certain people. Apostle, I'm traveling in the they will pray for you. And you will be preserved because they pray. Everybody who die in the car, you will be preserved. Because they spoke something. Because you don't know the mystery yet. So remain under them. The day you know, you will still be under a higher, but somehow you can still be able to preserve yourself. Do you know that Osi Banjo crashed in a helicopter? He did not die. What do you think was happening? He had the boy was there. Oh, the person, there was a time that his plane wanted to fall in the Mediterranean Sea. He said, No! I'm a son of Covenant. The plane shifted like this. The devil wanted to push me into the Mediterranean Sea. But because there was a covenant, there was a prophet over his life. And he was preserved. In 
had that been there was no prophet in the life of the children of Israel, they would have died since. They would be dead, dead, and dead, 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 dead. Because several times they were in bondage. Several times they were. In fact, when they allowed them, to, when they let the people go, they still came to come and cut them again, to kill them again. But a prophet preserved them. By a prophet, you can be preserved. The prophet is preservation. Sometimes the prophet, the prophet will give you guardianship. It will show you things that power to happen. But it says, show you the Lord God will do nothing except reveal his secret to serve and the prophet. It's a present position of accuracy and alignment with God. That's the prophetic, my friends. The apostolic will always establish doctrine, but your doctrine may not actually be current. Because the apostles are supposed to give us the current emphasis, but most of them are remaining on the old wine scheme. They are not opening themselves to the new dealings of God. But a prophet survives daily by staying with God. Prophets are the ones that are always with God. The Bible said, there might be many people among you, but to my prophet Moses, I took him face to face. A prophet hear God every day. He survived by listening to God. If God did not say, he doesn't say anything. He doesn't have anything to say. An apostle can still tell you the things he has. There are many revelations. There are many remas. A prophet doesn't have any remas to tell you. He tells you this is what God is saying. That's why nobody likes prophet. Because they tell you the truth. The real ones tell you the truth. When King Ahab wanted to go for war and Jehoshaphat, says, there no any problem in Israel that we may consult. They were looking for what? Protection. Because David fought almost in something worse. He did not lose anyone. How do you think he do it? They will always see the battle before they do it. If they check today and discover that they will win them, they will not do today, they will check tomorrow again. I get what I'm saying now. If you are supposed to travel today, you will die today. If you shift it to the next one hour, next two minutes, you won't die again because you have changed the time. Because devil has a time that he approaches for you. When you switch it a little bit in the realm of the spirit, let me tell you, the thing will change entirely. So sometimes God will delay you a little bit. You went to the car, suddenly you are about to enter and it was the many one space and somebody just came and pushed you and enter. God just preserved you for that one second because this car is doomed for dying. So you enter another one. So they waited for 30 minutes, 4 hours. But God was preserving from an accident. How many people? Was it, a, it was you that told me that? I mean, who told me that? They were coming and they were, there was armed robbery going on in uh, that road. It was steadfast. Look at them. So look at their car there. And they were killing people that do armed robbery here. But because apostle is there, their car, their car would have been the car that was just at the time of the armed robbery. It's God. That's the mystery of spiritual protection. Sometimes men are called delay and what those you see is God just trying to preserve you. If you know, you are keep quiet. If you enjoy the delay and like it. Because you are running and rushing your way into death. The mystery of how God protects people is still mysterious. Apart from the prophet, another way that God protects and preserves people is through covenant. Covenant. There are times when your prophet may not be able to protect you, but your covenant with God can preserve you. The Bible says, God, that you, my people, who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. There are certain sacrifices that you do that guarantee the preservation of God by force. The realm of the spirit answers nothing but to sacrifice. There are certain sacrifices that when you pay, you can rest and sleep well and nothing will ever happen to you. No amount of devil. Even if the whole hell is loose upon you, you will still survive. Because there is a covenant that speaks. The Bible says, I have made a promise to Abraham your father, to Isaac and to Jacob. I must fulfill it. Why? Because there was a covenant he established with these people. If not because of the covenant he has, he would have forget the, the children of Israel are one of the most disobedient people that I know in this earth. But let me tell you, covenant preserve them even their disobedience. Let me speed up our rush. Another hour of the mystery that you can survive with. Mind you, when I talk about covenant, I don't have the time to explain most of these things. But learn to establish covenant with God. Learn to establish covenant with God. You can be in your room and vow to God 
and make a covenant god if you do this i'll do that if you do this i'll do that i know what i'm saying when i say devil cannot kill you i cannot die on the road by accident i know what if i break the covenant something will happen spirit always keep their covenant god is the one that is faithful you may not be faithful that's why as we go for that i'll show you another mystery that can preserve you which is repentance and case even if you fall out another mystery that can preserve you that can guarantee protection is power power no matter your covenant with god if you're a man that is powerless you'll be frustrated i assure you i told you that there are two arms of god the arm of wisdom and the arm of power the arm of wisdom is the arm of intelligence where the mystery of this world is being played out because there is a warfare of wisdom that the devil tries to compare his wisdom with that of God but there is another arm of power because the devil will never let anybody go except power is in view the Bible says that people shall be winning the days of that power and through the greatness of that power will the enemy submit himself There are certain things in your life that will never see until power is in view. You will talk and talk and talk. Nothing will happen. You will require power to change it. Do you remember that the Bible says how God attended at it? How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with what? The Holy Ghost and with power. Holy Ghost is not enough. He has to give you what? Power. Why? The Holy Ghost is the highest personality you need both on heaven and on the earth so that you can have intimacy with God. But power may not be needed in heaven, but it's needed on earth. Why? Because, you see, there are darkness, demons, there are things you have to combat. You have to war and wrestle. As such, God needs to give you power. If not, Jesus Christ will be a good man and cannot cast out devil. He will be a good man, he cannot heal the sick. He requires power. Let nobody be free and say power is very important. It's very important. A man with power is a world changer. I assure you. When you touch a man of power by mistake, you die by correction. Because power doesn't understand your English. It responds by force. That's why when you try with, with a soldier, you will learn from John by force. When he slap you small, you understand power. The Bible says, and you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be my witness. Without power, you cannot be a witness. You will die in your witness. That's why many missionaries, they were very zealous, but they died. Why? No power. They went to our village. The idols in our village killed them. Why? They came with Jesus without power. They came with the Holy Ghost without power. And so they died. When I gave my life to Christ newly, I loved Jesus very well, but demons oppressed me very well. One day, the Lord told me, Philip, if you don't rise and pray and contend and rise to a level where I will give you my power, you will die. And you will come to me. That's why I understand that it's very important that a believer carry a flame that gives him power. And power is in diverse dimensions. There is, there is dunamis. If you have done physics before, they will tell you about kinetic energy and potential energy. Kinetic energy is energy in what? Action. Potential energy is energy in rest. When you receive the Holy Ghost, power come, but it's what? Dunamis. You need to be able to join in it and make it kinetic in action. As you begin to pray in tongues, karababa, barababa, suddenly the power that was at rest begin to gain energy. You see, energy atoms, they that what is called ground state and excited state of atomic level. When an atom is excited, it increases in energy and it leaves a, an energy level to another higher energy level. As you are praying, parababa, takaba, you are changing energy level. You are making your energy from potential energy to kinetic energy to an energy in action. Mm. 
immediately you begin to enter kinetic it become kratos at that time it's an, it's, it's an energy that is flowing you start seeing it flowing in you you be seen as if a torrent of water a torrent of fire is burning flowing all around you it's the power that god has deposited that is finding expression it's looking for the dead to raise it's looking for the sick to cleanse as the power is activated suddenly it becomes iskus when you see a situation it becomes iskus it's requiring contention let's say for instance suddenly they invite you they, they bring you to a shrine and suddenly you see you were in a shrine where there were powers you saw charms and amulets and they were flying on air at that time you know that there is power inside of you but you need to combat with the power what you need that time is iskus a power that can be combated for many people are dying why they have dynamis they have not joined into kratos they have not joined into iskus and so when they will come he killed them with their dynamis in them so god is in you although he's powerless why because you have choose to be powerless when i'm in the car i am muttering tongues inside let me see the power the witches and the wizard that will say that they will release another power i am prepared in kratos and in iskus when they look at your eye they see power elevating like this i remember one day i was just coming out of prayer one day he just saw me she wanted to kiss me something came out from her hit her go out she called them i said that was iskus you were coming with the darkness he had to hit you if you come with knife to trick me at the back something will slap you from the back there are powers that are working no man that does business with god is normal it's a lie even the devil cannot make you a normal person talk more of god we are under a spirit influence if you are normal check yourself again something is wrong somewhere i get what i'm saying now there's another power called exusia i have the time to explain all this to you so that we can move faster one of the greatest ways that you can also be preserved is through the anointing the anointing everything changed in a man's life the day he become anointed psalms 1 115 right or is it 105 by 15 Bible says, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm psalm 105 by 15 i can't read scriptures with you go right then Bible says, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm the anointing come with a preservation the day a man become anointed, it belongs to God. There is a smearing of God upon you. A deposit of God is upon you. As you increase in the anointing, God increases protection over you. Why? Because you are becoming a threat to the kingdom of darkness. I get what I'm saying. You may be a normal person, no problem, no enemies. As you begin to rise in the anointing, God will have to attach missionaries around you to protect you. The anointing attracts angels. No money. A part of the dynamic mystery that God protects you is angelic ministrations. Angelic ministration. You believe that Jesus is Lord, God is God, Holy Spirit is Holy Spirit. You don't believe in angelic ministration, you will die a beggarly person. Because angels are the cause of light, as demons are the cause of darkness. As you begin to rise, God attach you angelic ministrations. And many of them, you will be conversant and aware of them. Do you realize that we are not supposed to fight in the kingdom? Angels are supposed to fight for us. Do you realize that? Jesus Christ was the one that said that when, when, when Pharaoh, right? Is it Pharaoh or is it Pilate? Said that, do you not have the power to kill you? He said, no. The one that has given me to you has the greater power. And even if I wish, I can call for legions of angels. I can call for what? Twelve legions of angels. And they will free me here. Why did he have to say twelve legions? I told you that 
yesterday that a legion is about what? 12,000. Jesus said 12 legion. Why? Because he was at the center of the territorial government of what? Rome. And it's impossible for you to escape all the Felix legions, the all the legions that are in Rome. Because he was at the center. Those guys fight spirit. Even if you say you want to escape from them, they will sleep and they want to kill you. So Jesus said, from this calculation, all your security can be broken by 12 legions if I desire. And they are my beck and call. But I have choose to remain like that. That's to say that if I die, Jesus Christ opened his mouth and mistakenly call one legion or any legion, they will come. Do you not see that you can keep quiet and you will die simply because you do not engage your angels to function? Think I'm saying that? God has attached angels to everyone. And as you advance, you will attach more. But let me tell you, when you don't give them matching orders, they do nothing. Was it not, um, is it Cornelius now that understands? He said, I am a man under authority. I have soldiers under me. I believe you are a man under authority because no one can do this kind of thing. I'm not under authority. So just send one of your servants and my son will be healed. And his faith make the angels because angels respond to prayer, they respond to faith. Makes them to be able to just walk. As I began to rise, God attached me personal angels and he told me each of their names. I told me this I will do this for you, this I will do this for you. So I'm very, very conscious many more times. I know when a degree, I told you yesterday that angels are product of light. Many more times you design them by their functioning or by their presence. As you begin to rise in God, He will start showing you vision, dream, dream, dream. A time will come that God will cease all vision and dream. He wants you to live by faith. You will have the inner know. You have the ability to be able to know like God, to reason like God, and think like God. I get what I'm saying now. Because the highest level of maturity is to be led by the Spirit of God. Not that you have to see a vision, see a dream, see this one. What about the days that your eyes are removed, your ears are removed, everything is removed? You can still be led from within you. I get what I'm saying now. Another way that God can protect a man is via faith. I told you. I don't believe I can be in your car and he's traveling. A lady, one of our my daughter called me and she said, Apostle, I'm traveling and it's as though this car is going to have accident or the way this car is moving. I said, sweetheart, why are you thinking that the car will have accident? There are people that are sinners in this your car. They do not think that they are going to die. There are people that are Muslim. They don't think that are going to you that you are a believer, don't talk it. You are believing that this car will have accident. And they just shall live by his own faith. And the expectation of the righteous cannot be cut short. Job said, the things I deeply fear has come upon me. Sometimes what you are afraid of will come against you. Conquer the fear. What is the worst that can happen? Nothing. We were in the plane flying from is it Lagos to Jaws or something like that. I saw one guy sitting by the other side with his girlfriend. They were just, you know, and there was one lady, there was one one that was sitting by me. That one, she was praying she's from Lagos. About one hour, five minutes. She's from Lagos to just she was just praying. They give her food to eat, she's giving to eat. Cake and all those things. Because sometimes the turbulence of the wind makes the plane look as though you are going to die. But I know. Sometimes they say, God, God, you know I'm still here. I'm still here. Those cannot people, they don't they believe they are not going to die. Me here. I believe I'm going to die. That's why you will die. Your faith, as Bessie does, I say, if your faith say yes, God's faith can never say no. What is your faith saying? I shall not live, I shall not die, but live. Or I shall not live, I shall die. Many of you, before you, you write exam, you have failed yourself in your head. I have written exam before, sir, that I got 3 over 40, and I still got B in the course. I don't know how it happened. After I got the skill, I said, this one cannot be my own. I refuse it by faith. Not by my, my, my labor, but by faith, I refuse it. 
Are you know what I'm saying now? I travel so much. Most I'm not in school. A part of the result just came out. Just to see all the rest, B and A. So that I'm in the higher. I don't know how it happened. When you believe so much, you can be here like this. Angels will be writing your exam there. You can be here like this. God will show you your script. The answers. What is your faith? What are you using your faith to do? To doubt God the more or to believe God the more? Part of the mysteries of spiritual protection is to have faith and believe that God is for you, is not against you. That all the elements of nature are for you, they are not against you. That the sun is supposed to be for you, the air is supposed to be for you, everything is supposed to be for you, nothing should be against you. Another mystery that you can engage is the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. There are many days I don't have the privilege to speak in tongues as much as I can, as I can say, but I can say, Lord Jesus, you know I love you. And I'm calling the name. It's a hard posture, it's a hard disposition. That we say, at the name, not at the mention, at the name. You are have a revelation of the name of Jesus. Because I think in Brazil or Spain, that people that bear the name Jesus. So it's not about the Jesus. But the name, because the Bible says his name is exalted far above all principalities and powers. And part of the things that will come against you, they are principalities and they are powers. So many more times, say, Lord Jesus, you know I'm here. I believe in you. What is the revelation of the name of Jesus that you have? Having the revelation of the name of Jesus is having the revelation that you are Christ. That you are seated with Christ. That Christ is in you, the hope of glory. The only kind of is called that can this happen to Christ? No, it can't happen to me. It's a lie. Why? I am one with Christ. At the name of Jesus, every knee bow. So, when we come to minister healing to people, we don't say Jesus heal you. We say I heal you in the name of Jesus. Why? Because at that time you are the Christ the person is seeing. Many people have never seen God. It's you they are seeing. So you have come as the witness of the Christ. I don't know what I'm saying now. The name of Jesus is a tool for preservation. And the name of Jesus is as powerful as the revelation of him that you have. Somebody can say in the name of Jesus, be healed. Not what happen. And others will say, no, Jesus will be healed. Why? Diverse revelation. I get what I'm saying now. As you grow in God, in the knowledge of Christ, the revelation of Jesus grow, and the name of Jesus become more powerful in your lips. Because a Muslim can say, Jesus, Waka, Ubanka, Shege, nothing will happen to you. But you, try and say it and mean it, you may die now. Why? Because of revelation. Bible speaking in the book of 1 Corinthians 12, he said, that concerning spiritual, I don't want you to be ignorant. I know that you were Gentiles carried away onto this dumb idol, even as you were led. And I want to record to you that no one speaking by the Spirit called Jesus what? A cause. And no one can say Jesus is not except by the Spirit. That it's important for you to say Jesus is not a really mean it, except that the Spirit of God to facilitate that in you. And you can never call Jesus a cause except a wrong Spirit propagated that in you. The name is better in Revelation and is sustained in Revelation. Many more times, if you are in a situation, say, Jesus, the thing will calm down. I get what I'm saying now. If you believe in the name and apply it, I tell you to work. Look at those sorts of schemes. And I don't think I got a little bit testimony now. They do something in the name of Jesus. But when they approach principalities, those who will sit upon Bible and knock your head. Why? They are legal. They are legal entity. You wrestle with principalities. You don't cast them out like demons. That means like a prince you have wrestled with God. And like a prince you have prevailed. Principalities you wrestle with them. Why? Because they are princes that don't have territory. So they are looking for how to colonize religion. I told you about territorial alignment. Principality. And I told you about spiritual mapping yesterday. How that the realm of the spirit is distributed according to spiritual mapping. And those mapping are accustomed jurisdiction and guidance by what? 
cherubims and seraphims. One of the mysteries again you can engage is the blood of Jesus. I need to be fast. I want to explain a lot. The blood of Jesus and that mystery that you can engage. Bible say when I see the blood, I will pass over. Do you believe that you are sealed with the blood of Jesus? Do you believe that you are covered with the blood of Jesus? The blood of Jesus is the reason why your sin can be forgiven. It's because of the blood of Jesus that the devil cannot have any hold in you. You are saved because of the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus that washes away your sins. The blood of Jesus has the ability to protect you, to cover you. And Titus bears a lot about the blood in his first session. So it's the same mystery. The next mystery you can engage is the testimony of Jesus. There are certain times I'm just in a place, I know that I have traveled before, I did not have accident. I will travel now, now I have accident. The same God that preserved me from not having accident before, He will still preserve me again because God is faithful. Human beings are not faithful, God is faithful. The Bible says the testimony of Jesus is what? The spirit of prophecy, the spirit of the Nabi, the spirit of the Nabi to see power. The Bible said they overcome him what? By what? The blood of the Lamb and what? By the testimony. Many more times, recount again your testimony. And tell God, God, you have done this before. You have done that before. You can do it now again. That will provoke you to do more. If God has preserved you before, He can preserve you now. If you slept last night and did not die, you can still sleep today and not die. Why? Because the same God that keeps you yesterday that He will keep you today again. But say, He that keepeth over Israel and watch over He never sleep no slumber. He's the same God. I think first Chronicle, I believe second Chronicle 20. Joshua was the one that began to. First Corinthians 2020. Joseph was the one that began. He was in a point where he doesn't know what to do. He said, God, you have done this to our fathers. You have done this. You have done this. Do it again for us now. How do you do what I'm saying now? Sometimes you can tell God, Father, you have done this, you have done this. Can you do it now? Sometimes you tell God, Father, you are the one that do this for Israel. You do this with this. Really? Do this for me now. And anytime you somebody come and share a testimony, you can be able to replicate it. Because that the God did for this person, He can do it for you. If God has been preserved you already, He can preserve you. If God has preserved me, He can preserve you. If God has preserved Paul, Apostle Paul, He will preserve you. If God has preserved us, Apostle, He will preserve you too. Why? Because all of us belong to the same commonwealth of Zion. It's part of our heritage. Another of the mysteries that you can always engage is the mystery of prayer. I don't have to talk about that. We are people of prayer. When I was going before, I used to be in the car. When I'm traveling, I would pray in the car till I reach my destination. Until the night, I can actually rest by sleeping in the car. So now when I'm traveling, I say, devil, let's meet on the highway. And I sleep. I allow angels to do the fighting with the devil there. You get know what I'm saying now? But you have this revelation that I'm sharing and you are confident of them. Don't rest to keep praying. The next you can also engage is a mystery of mercy. Mercy. Let me tell you, there are certain times that even if you are a sinner, I read somebody that got finished from sinning now and he's trying to say, Father, have mercy upon me. He knows he's a sinner. I know that he cannot say, Father, protect me because According to alignment, is out of course. I just want to say, say, Father, have mercy upon me. Most of the people that Jesus Christ healed were what? They are not believers. So what did they ask for him? Oh, son of David, have mercy. We are not qualified for half. Many more times, God can preserve you by mercy. I'm very serious. So every paradigm you feel that you are not qualified. You don't know enough. You don't have faith. You don't have power. You don't have covenant. Father, I know you are a God of mercy. Have mercy upon me. And the Bible says, I can show mercy to whoever I choose to show mercy to. A woman was caught in a very act of adultery. She was supposed to be killed. 
Jesus came there and showed mercy. See, anytime Jesus appeared, mercy come. Because mercy will always prevail over judgment. According to God's standard, all of us have sinned and we should die. Because the soul that sin must die. But as I explained to you yesterday, the blood of Jesus has always been kind out for mercy for us. We can plead the mercy of Jesus. Another the powerful mystery of protection is repentance. Repentance. Let me tell you the truth. A man that does not understand repentance will not live long. If you don't know how to repent as a believer, you may never live long. Why? Because he will not always be right. I'm very serious. Mind you, we are still human beings. And I told you that never trust in your flesh. Your flesh will always lead you dead. Trust yourself as a man of prayer, a man of knowledge, a man of whatever. But your flesh is talking dead all the time. David, a man after God's own heart. Look at what he did. Moses, a man, the meekest man on earth. Look at what he did. Check all through the life of great people. Abraham. How many times he lied? How many times he Noah. He was the one that drank, man. Check most of those people. Their lives, eh? Do not speak more like people that have really stayed with God. But they repent daily. Immediately when Nathan confronted David for what he did, he repented. And that's what the Bible talks about, a broken, a contract heart and a broken spirit. Many of you are too proud of your things. You feel it that you are too big to repent. One time to one person, you said we should kneel down and pray. Some people are just, I was feeling the pain in my leg, but that is a sacrifice to God. Father, I mean repentance. I mean it. The Bible says to him who knows what to do, and is not doing to him, is a sin. Do you know how many times you have a sin every day? So sometimes when you just come and repent like that, you come back into righteousness. You get what I'm saying now? Repentance is for believers, it's not for unbelievers. The Bible says, and even God repented. God changed his heart. When Moses talked to him, Peter said, the Bible said, so what shall we do? He said, repent and be what? Baptized. When many more times when they are talking to believers, I tell them what? Repent, repent. When Jesus Christ came, he said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Forgiveness of sins and being born again is for unbeliever. But when you are born again, many more times you err. Eh, you make mistakes. So you need to what? Repent. Not to be born again, but just repent. It doesn't take two minutes. All you need to do is just what? To acknowledge your inadequacy. And ask God for forgiveness. That's all. And you are good to go. So I can just slap on and go. And say, Father, I repent. I have done the wrong thing. I say again. Bah. Father, I repent. I say again. Bah. Father, and God is compared to always forgive me. But I can slap me and see go away. And I'll just die. Why? I'm, I'm not I'm, I'm under protection. Many wives, you finish fighting with your husband, you go out. You are under, you are out of cover. I teach you another day. God. Christ. Man. Woman. You get it? That order cannot be started. Immediately when you finish fighting with him, go out and repent. And come out and pray. Boast in the Lord, not in yourself. Because you are a bunch of problems. I'm very serious. Any minister that trusts in himself will fall. It's just a matter of when he will fall. The Bible says, trust in the Lord, not you. You don't trust any human being in your head. But your flesh will always speak dead. I do know that this, when Jesus Christ was talking about this thing, they asked him, how long should we forgive a brother at all? You know what he said? If somebody offend you, forgive how many times? In a day. 70 times times 7. If you calculate that with the calculator, you discover that even if you choose to forgive the person, even if you choose to be sinning after every second, you are still be forgiven. 
Then imagine God. How many times will you not forgive us? Learn to repent, my friend. Many more times I repent daily because I don't know where I've, 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 I've wronged God. Because God may want me to do something I have not done. Sometimes disobedience. Maybe God say, give this person this. I refuse to. I will repent before the thing will get spoiled. So if God said that is phone to somebody, he refuse to dash it. I refuse to repent. So as you are traveling, the phone just fall, blah, and break. You will disobey, and you came under punishment. Learn to repent, it's healthy. We will soon be running up. Another one of the mystery is the mystery of the world, which is knowledge. The world. The world. The Bible said, Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. The Bible said, Pray that you will not what? Enter into temptation. But sometimes, when you have even entered into temptation, what will preserve is what? The word hidden in your heart. I get what I'm saying now. If your prayer cannot stop temptation from coming, when temptation comes, the word in your heart can preserve you from what? Temptation. I get what I'm saying now. The Bible says Jesus Christ was led to the wilderness by the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God carried him to the wilderness to be tempted. But when he was in the wilderness, there was word in his heart, so he could not sin. So even when the devil is tempting him, he was answering and saying, it is written. That was word. That was knowledge. Many of you, you don't have any knowledge in your head. So any temptation that prayer cannot preserve, when it comes, you fall. Blah. Let's move fast. How to engage the mystery of obedience. Obedience will be protected. Obedience. Never disobey God speaking in tongues. Don't live a prayerful life in disobedience. Anytime you want to do something, God rebuke you. Stop it. I told you, it may be a pathway to danger. Only God has known why He ensured that some people did not come. You may be in the flesh and say, You need to come, you need to come. My brother, the better will be God than man. I get what I'm saying now. Obedience will always lead you to an expected end. Disobedience will bring destruction. One of my friends was about to come and meet me in, uh, is it in Jaws one time. I was about to travel. As he just put his leg to enter the car, God said, young man, drop down. He had to pay. As he sat down, he was just, he was just not comfortable. The anointing, mysteries were switching. They were, they were not feeling that car, I'm not supposed to be here. He has to drop down and say, Man, I'm not going again. No. He will say, no, we can't give you your money back. He said, okay, no problem. He had to pull another car. But as he, was, as he was going later on, he saw that car hanging that crashed in an accident. I was about to go to Abuja one day. I saw my pulley. Because me, I like to just follow route. I don't care. Because those park people sometimes they delay me too much. I don't want to be in the park and I come and see somebody that knows me. I was like, ah, I don't know. So, as I stopped the car, I had to enter. The only go to me, I feel it. If you put your leg inside this car, they will cut your neck. What? That if I enter this car, they are kicking up us, they are going to cut my neck. See, let me tell you. It's a different thing. God did not tell me anything and I enter. There will be another mystery that can protect me. But when God talks to you, obey God. Don't try to prove that you are a powerful person. You may die being a powerful person. I get what I'm saying now. If you have a private jet, you want to fly, God said, don't fly, my brother. Don't say because it's your own private jet, you must fly that night. You may just die that day. I don't know how God does it, but let me tell you. God prefers that you always obey Him. That's what makes Him God over you. Because if you permit disobedience consistently, there will be disorder. Yes, mercy may prevail. So all this mystery may prevail. 
but sometimes your leg will be cut. You may survive with what with a cut with a broken leg. How to withdraw? I, the man says, "Enter, enter." I say, "Sir, I'm not entering." See, you don't trust me. I say, "It's not about trusting." There is a voice I hear. Almighty Daosa. See, there's a time he was in the U.S. They gave him one big house. He was there, and that night, as he was inside, the Holy Ghost said, "Idaosa, Idaosa, leave that house and come to Nigeria. I don't want you to remain in the U.S." And he don't touch in the house. He went and met the man that gave him the house. He said, see, the Lord doesn't want me to stay in this place. He doesn't want me to stay in the house. Take your key. I'm going back to Nigeria. He went and met his wife. Let's go back. The wife said, lie, lie. How can I? Oh, God, are you hearing? House in the U.S. You are staying here. You say we should go. He has to leave and go. Men that know God live daily obeying God. If you remain in disobedience with God for a very long time, God will prove to you that you are a human being. Check many people that God that disobey God. Look at what God did to them. Obedience make your working with God stronger. Obedience to God make God trust you the more. Most of us are product of obedience. If you have not been consistent obeying God, I assure you, God cannot commit so much to you. I get what I'm saying now. Obedience will put you in the right track. God will lead you right. Don't live a life of disobedience. Very very costly. I know a woman. There was a woman story that I had. That woman was she just finished sleeping with the senator, and she woke up. She started speaking to her. The senator said, "What are you saying?" She said, "She wants to check whether the Holy Ghost is still with her." You see, she is living in disobedience, and she started to pray. The Holy Ghost has left, and what she has is tongues. I get what I'm saying now. Another weapon that you can engage is Thanksgiving. 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 See, anytime you thank God, you provoke God to do more for you. Anytime you appreciate God, you provoke Him to do more. Many of you are better ungrateful. There was a day I was preaching about Thanksgiving in youth fellowship, and I told them that many people don't see the need to, to appreciate God, they just need to thank God. Why? They think they have their own life. When you go to hospital and see how people are gasping for bread, longing to survive the next one minute, you will appreciate why you are still alive. Have you gone through certain situation and suddenly you survive? It looks as though it will kill you, but you survive. You will thank God better, let's say, for instance, if you are, as you are going now, you stop at the main road and a car just come and hit you. And you went up ah, and you fell down bah, and nothing happened you just stand up you will say thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus. because you just understand that you're supposed to die but you survive many more times we need a reason to thank god no just thank god naturally make it a lifestyle make it a habit the more you thank god the more god protects you because there are not too many people that are grateful to god i get what i'm saying now Father, thank you for yesterday. Thank you for protecting me. Thank you for this. Thank you for that. Second to the last mystery you can engage is the mystery of wisdom and revelation. Wisdom is a defense, the Bible said. Money is a defense. But the Bible said the excellency of wisdom is that it gives light to whoever possess it. When you have money, you can gather many soldiers. In fact, even the chief of army said you can buy him with money. But the Bible says wisdom is also a defense. By it, you can build nations, you can build systems. Do you realize that? Do you realize that when you inter- when nations want to fight, most times they use intelligence and wisdom. There are wisdom for preservation. God can give it to you. God can tell you for you, do like this, like this, like this, like this. If you are doing like this, you will be preserved all the days of your life. And after you tell you that you, do like this, like this, like this, like this. That's your own preservation. I know people that God tell them that they should be fasting every Tuesday, Tuesday. That's their revelation. 
Every Tuesday, as long as you have every Tuesday, you will survive well in God. The Tuesday is not for you to look as though all hell is loose over you. Why? A revelation and wisdom is given to you at that direction. And that person, God will say, you should give this to this person. That's your own revelation. And because you are giving this to this person, you will be connected to the protection of this person forever. I get what I'm saying now. So when wisdom educates you, embrace it and work with it. I told you about the story yes, and that day now in the, in the prayer meeting at home. I told you about the story one guy that gave his life to Christ. After he gave his life to Christ, he went and met his pastor. Pastor, I'm born again now. But I have many girlfriends. In fact, I'm living with one now in my house. Is it right for me to remain in the same room with my girlfriend? The pastor said, it's right. The guy went out of me, he come back and said, Pastor, I am sitting with my girlfriend. Is it right for me to be sleeping in the same room with my girlfriend? And we are doing that. Like the pastor said, It's right. After the guy came, after the next time, he said, Pastor, I'm sitting with my girlfriend. Is it right? Before the pastor said, It's right. He said, Pastor, it's not right. It's not right. It's not right. It's not right. And the pastor said, Then what can you do now? He said, She's packing now. She's packing now. I'm sending her out. What happened to the guy? He suddenly realized that as long as that girl is staying with him, there will be a problem. He had a revelation. He had a knowing. A wisdom came to him. But at that being, he went and met Pastor. Pastor, I'm born again. Should I pursue my wife? Pursue my girlfriend? Pastor, I pursue her, pursue her. You see, they can leave. You can pursue her and let another house for her. And they'll be meeting in another place. I get what I'm saying now. Because there was no wisdom, there was no revelation. But the pastor realized that even if we tell the guy not to stay together again, they will find a way to still meet one way or another. We are allowing for God to deal with him. And when God deals with you, he deals with you well. The other wisdom you can engage, the other mystery you can engage, is the mystery of confidence and boldness. Many of you are not bold, are not confident. The Bible said the wicked run away no one possible, but the righteous is as bold as a lion. Sometimes you have to be bold. The Holy Ghost came upon the Acts of the Apostles in, in the book of Acts of Apostles chapter 4. He came upon the believers and gave them boldness so that they can speak the word again. Although they were challenged, but they were, there was boldness. Paul and Silas, they were in prison. But a boldness came and they began to engage songs and certain mystery and the team. Many of you are not bold enough to engage certain mystery among people. You have to be confident and be bold. It guarantees protection. Do you know that if somebody comes and tells you that, Paul, you will die tomorrow. If you are bold and come and say, I will kill you, the person will be afraid. Because every man that you are not afraid of is afraid of you. Let's say everybody is running here. Ah, they come shoot gun and you stand. What are people doing with this, with this stick? They will be afraid. They don't know what you have eaten too. Your confidence will always demoralize your enemy. It will make your enemy afraid. I'm telling you the truth. I don't know one day Paul has come to Zaya. He has seen me. We used to stay, we stay on campus. Sometimes I used to carry my laptop like this and I'm walking in the night like this. Going, I'll be walking, I'll be pressing my phone going out. Call this boys. No. Sometimes I'm going, I'll sit there in my bag and say, let's connect it. I'll say, connect what? And maybe when I turn and I talk, they'll be afraid. And sometimes I'm walking and then I'm speaking to her. You will be a madman to see a madman not here be afraid. I get what I'm saying now. But you are trying to be afraid, afraid, afraid. That's why they will come out. Your confidence will make the devil flee away. Sometimes you are in the room when there is no light. You say, hmm. But if you are confident, you are bold. Sometimes when I walk through darkness, I know that there are spirits, but I'm confident they can do nothing. You'll be tempted, turn your back, turn your back. Are they not coming close to you? Forget. Can you walk faster than a spirit? No. If they can do something, they would have done things. So just be confident. They don't want to put fear in you to terrorize you. Because fear is a terror. You'll be wondering, you're going to kill yourself somewhere. Be bold. The righteous is always bold. Are you what I'm saying now? Another one is faith and belief. Always believe and engage faith. I have spoken that already. The last three points of warfare you can always engage. I said the last 
mystery of protection I cannot engage is the weapons of warfare. Why? You know, everything I told you was what you can use to come against warfare. But there are weapons of warfare. Why? Because there are always be war. I was invited for one meeting and they say the title is no more war. When I came, I watered their face by telling them there must always be war. There are people upon this earth that you don't need to look for their trouble, they will look for your trouble. So what will you do? There is already war. The Bible said there was war in heaven. If there is war in heaven, who tell there will be war? Eh? There must be war. But you can go to a point that you have enough weapon that you are guaranteed of always winning your war. Why? Because we rise in this kingdom by warfare. Warfare is our tool for lifting. The more war you fight, the more you rise. Even the Bible said that they, I have given you the land, but rise up and possess it in battle. You are supposed to war and conquer territories. And the land that they refused to war and conquer them were the lands that we are bleak. And they became their problem. And if you read the book of Ephesians 6, from 10 and the rest, you will see all the weapons of warfare. But the Bible says one of the greatest weapons is the shield of faith. That's it, and he brought back faith again because faith is general for everyone. Among those weapons of war, there are some that you put on. That you put on the whole armor of God. There are some that you take on to yourself. We call that, is it Alal and Ban or something like that? You take them off. There are some weapons you take, some you wear as breastplate of righteousness. Others you put upon yourself. Talk about the breastplate of righteousness. Talk about you guiding up your loins with truth around about you. For you to be protected by God, you need to do things God's way. And most of the ways of God are principles and laws and instructions and order. You must be righteously strict to yourself. You must be secretly pure. The purity of your truth must be there. A man's sin is never strong in warfare, I tell you the truth. An unrighteous man is at the mercy of the devil. The shield of faith is the covering of faith. The revelation and the truth of God that you have known, that you have chosen to believe, that has begun to you as a shield that covers you. What about God? What how many scriptures on protection do you know? I shall not die but live. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He made me lie down in green pastures. He restored my soul. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall not fear. The Lord is with my me. You begin to speak for these are the shields that guide you. That is the way Psalm 91 will say. That God will give his angels charge over you. That God will protect you. He will cover you. How much truth do you know about your protection? These are part of the shield you can gather. When you gather enough scriptural revelation on them and you guide yourself with them, they become a tone and a shield for your own covering. They become like a defense. Because the Bible talks about fairy dark and pestilence that will come against you. With those things, when they come, they will meet those things. So that when the devil comes to you in fear, you attack him in your own faith. You approach the fear in faith. Can we pray? Why do you need all these weapons of protection? Why? Because the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle against principalities, against powers, against thrones, against dominions, against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. You cannot just live just like that. There are wickedness. The arrow hair lying in the hand of wicked and unreasonable men. So you will have to be able to survive and be protected through diverse machineries and weapons of the Lord. As the Lord has oh God, I engage your weapons of warfare. I engage your mysteries. I believe in your mysteries. Let this dwell in me as a structure, as an alignment in the name of Jesus. Jesus, 
I will not die like a chicken. It's a lie. I will not die like a chicken. Other people die in a plane crash. I will not crash. Other people die in an accident. I will not die. It's possible. Other do not die. I will leave. Demons kill people. I will not be. I will not be killed by demons. There are curses in the bloodline, but there are blessings in the bloodline. I come against the curses by the mystery of the Lord. I am protected. I am shielded from the curses. I live as if they don't exist. The devil is handicapped over my case. The devil can do nothing. There is no devil anywhere. I am protected. I am covered. The hand of the Lord is upon me. I am an anointed one. Say, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. No, I cannot be harmed. I am anointed, I am covered by the power of the Lord, by the mercy of the Lord. I repent of every ungodliness. I repent of every unrighteousness. I come under alignment. I come under government. I come under the jurisdiction of God. I am covered in the Lord. Father, I thank you for protection. Thank you for yesterday. I know you have done it before. You can do it now.